Now we're starting on the second module of the series. In this module, I'm going to focus on starting the operating system layer. The purpose of the operating system layer is to make future porting as easy as possible. And so all of the decisions that I make about what goes into this layer and how it gets added and how it gets organized and all of that will be in service of that goal. For example, something that definitely does belong in the operating system layer is a function for listing the files in a directory. But when writing that function, it can be tempting to give it fancy features like the ability to filter out folders or to filter out hidden files or to filter files based on some pattern in their name. And all of that I'm going to consider too fancy to put in the operating system layer. Everything that I do put in will be fairly minimal so that if I do want fancy features later, I'll implement them on top of it and not have to port those fancy features to each operating system. That way the actual process of porting can be as small and lightweight as I can get it to be. For now I'm just going to implement a Win32 backend to the operating system layer. If I needed to design the APIs this time, I would probably want to have two backends because an API whose purpose is to abstract more, two or more backends should really be tested in that circumstance. But this is an API I've sort of designed several times and I know what I'm going to want. So I don't feel the need to run two backends at once here. For this first pass, I'm just going to focus on a few non-graphical operating system layer features. I'm thinking I'm going to do memory, that way we can finish using setting up the 64-bit arenas that we started in the base layer. I want to work on file reading, file writing, path handling, listing files in a directory, that kind of stuff. I want to set up a system for the thread context that we will use throughout the code, kind of like the base layer. It's an important concept that everything is going to kind of get glued together by. and. I want to get it in early, it's just that it doesn't belong in the base layer since it has to be different on each operating system. So that's why it's going in this layer. But it is pretty fundamental to get a thread context in there for the way I want to do things. So we'll do that. And then I'm just going to put in some odds and ends, you know, handling time uh, formats, uh, getting entropy from the operating system, and uh, loading shared libraries, stuff like that. There's certainly a lot more that can go into an operating system layer, but I'd like to keep this module brief so that we're not spending forever building features and never getting to use them to do something fun. We can always go back and add more sections to the operating system layer as the need arises for other features, so it's not critical that we get everything. These are just the things that I find the most useful, especially memory, file management, and thread context stuff. I can't really do anything in the style that I like to do without those things nailed down. So that's what we're doing. In this session, I'm planning on doing the memory part. It's a pretty small part. It mostly just involves implementing that plugin for the base allocator that we have in the base layer. So there won't be a whole lot to it, but I'll show you how I organize it when it's ready. I've organized the includes for the operating system layer in the same way that I did with the base layer by giving it an ink file where I can organize out the other includes. That way users only include one file and the details get sorted out behind the scenes. It's even better in this case because now when there are multiple backends, the task of linking up each context to each include for that context implementation can be written in this one place and the user doesn't have to sort it out. 
I set up osessential.h as the header that will include all of the absolutely most fundamental features that we're doing in this module. And then win32essentials.cpp is the implementation for all of those things. So you can see here that we have the four functions we need for memory, reserve, commit, decommit, and release. And I've kept them very thin. They're very easy to port around. All it takes to implement this concept is virtual alloc for the reserve and the commit, and virtual free for the decommit and release. There's plenty of info about these functions on the documentation page, so if you want to see more about what you can do with them, take a look there. Finally, even though I said that the main purpose of the operating system layer is to make it as easy as possible to port to operating systems in the future by wrapping the things we need in very thin abstractions, the, there's still other stuff that the operating system layer can do well, as long as doing that stuff well doesn't take away from that main purpose. So for cases like that, I'm going to put the functions into the helper file here, and that way I can have things that make the interface a little nicer, a little more convenient, that get built on top of the actual abstraction, and it doesn't confuse the problem on either side. The user still gets to have a nice interface that they can call, and when a new implementation comes along, there's no confusion about which functions are and aren't part of the port. The port functions are all in the other files, and these are just helpers that wrap that stuff to make the interface nicer. So for example, here what I did was I made the base memory plugin a thing you can get via a single call without having to build it yourself, even though that will work the same way on every operating system once you've implemented the four memory functions. So that's it for this session on the memory system. I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.